Welcome design students. In this video, we're going to learn how to use splines for modeling. Splines are two-dimensional lines and curves, much like the Bezier curves that you've used in Illustrator and Photoshop. They're defined by control points that you can manipulate to smooth out the curve and change its appearance. In 3D modeling, we can project a surface along these curves to come up with all sorts of interesting um, effects. Blind modeling is very different than poly modeling, which is what we've been doing up to this point. It's much more exact and it's used in all sorts of product design and engineering applications like automobile design and architecture. We're going to learn how to use the revolve function to create a surface along a cross section defined by splines. And we're going to create a wine glass and a bottle in the shape of your choice. We can also create candlesticks and we're gonna learn how to do that. In addition, anything that is lathed like this, which is what this is called, uh, like a chair leg, um, a baluster and a banister, or um, a post on a porch, any lathed object like this can be modeled using the revolve technique and spline modeling. So let's get started. So here's my scene. Um, I'm going to start by uh, making a new scene, but the first thing I'm always going to do when I start a new project is create a project folder. Once I have that created, I'm going to go ahead and create a new scene. And then you'll need to go to the internet and find a picture of a wine glass or some other type of uh, fluted glass like this that you might want to create. Once you've found your image, we're going to create an image plane. So come up to Create, Free Image Plane, and then click the folder icon and find your image plane. Mine is just sitting on my desktop. And once you have that in there, switch to your front view and move it up so that the glasses are sitting on the ground. And move the one that you want to create space centered on the grid. If you want to move anything um, without touching the Move Gizmo, then you press down on your middle mouse button and it will move it in the axis that you have locked in. You just have to click on the axis to move it. Once you have that centered, let's go to the channel box and create a layer. And we'll call this layer Reference. And we've done this before. Give it a color, click Save, and then we're going to lock that layer so we don't accidentally select it. Now, when you're creating splines for this application, you have to be in the front view. You have to be in the straight on view. You cannot be in the perspective view. So make sure that you are in the front view to do this. The reason this is is because your control points for your curves have to be on one plane. If you're in perspective, they could be all over the place. This keeps them on flat on one plane. Now, once we've got that done, we need to come up to Create, Curve Tools, and let's use the CV Curve Tool. CV stands for Control Vertex, and the CV Curve Tool creates what are called NURBS curves. A NURB curve, N-U-R-B, as you can see right here, stands for non-uniform rational B splines. It's a certain type of spline. Not all splines are NURBS. So let's um, go ahead and grab that tool. And we're going to zoom in, and we're going to create a cross section of this glass starting here. Click and just define the curve. When you get up to the top, give a couple of points, and then match the curve point for point back down the other side until you get down to here and then give it a couple of curve, uh, points here maybe one in the middle of the stem then a couple of points there and then one here and maybe one right there on the origin now once we have that done let's switch to the move tool right click on our spline and select control vertices and you will see as we zoom in that we have these control points and we can move them to help define the curve and smooth it out. You want a nice smooth curve 
this is a cross section of the curve here, so this glass should be getting thicker. Try to make sure that your points are exactly on the origin here, because Revolve works on that pivot point. You don't want any lumps in your glass. You want it to be sort of a consistent thickness all the way up. Make sure these points are in the middle, centered on the y-axis. And then we can hide our reference plane by clicking this little box here, unchecking the visibility box. And this is what you should have. Now this is an open spline, in other words it's not a closed shape. Once we have that defined, we can apply the surface to it. So switch to object mode and come up to Surfaces and find Revolve. Open Revolve, Options, and let's take a look at them. We can revolve around different axes here. We can use the Pivots object or some preset pivot that we have defined. We can define how the surface is uh, applied. We can define how much it is swept. We want it all the way around, so it's going to stay 360. We can set a tolerance. We can define how many segments we want around the perimeter of our object. And we can define the output. We can either have it put out NURBS or polygons. I'm going to select polygons. And we're going to click apply. And this is what you end up with. Now, let's take a look at this in the perspective view. Now the reason this is black is because the normals are turned inside out. And we've also got some problems here whereby we have edges that are not continuing down the whole thing. So we would have to clean that up. Let's undo that by hitting Control Z and let's try outputting NURBS. And you can see that looks much better. But NURBS are not something that we can manipulate with um, vertices and edges and stuff like we're used to doing. Now we can um, convert our NURBS to polygons, but when we do that, we end up with a copy that's the same as the output we got when we just did this. So let's go ahead and undo that and go ahead and, and output to polygons. And then we're going to have to um, switch to face mode. We're going to have to flip these normals because they're inside out. That's why it's black. So switch to face mode. Select all the faces. Shift, right click, select face normals, and select reverse normals. And now it should look like this. And then what we have to do is we have to clean up this geometry a little bit. Now this is uh, the easiest thing to do is to just delete these edges, but we also need some edges here. So I'm going to switch to vertex mode. I could use the multi-cut tool here, but it is kind of glitchy sometimes. So I'm going to click this vertex and click the opposite vertex, right click, shift right click, and select connect components, and that puts an edge where I need it to be. Oops, wrong tool. Okay, once we have that done, we need to look at the bottom and see if we have one that we need to do here, and we do. Interestingly, it's in the same place. I'm going to push F this time to focus on that vertex. Okay, now that we have that done, 
we can delete unwanted edges. So if you look at the top here, you will see that we have edges here, here, and here. And I'm double clicking on them. Once you get them selected, right click and select delete edge. And then check. Need to delete this one too. Any edge that doesn't go all the way down needs to be deleted. And this is going to take a little time, but you just got to do it. And you got to do the top, the bottom, and the stem. Look for any edges that do not go all the way down. Shift, right click, delete edge. I'm going to go down here just to show you. You may have some on the stem here that do the same thing. And you'll probably have some on the base. as well. And you'll have some on the very bottom just like you did the top. Now I've done this before and it worked perfectly. I don't know why it sometimes does this, but it does. And when it does, you have to clean it up. I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this and when I'm done I'll come back and we will continue working on our glass. And once you get finished with that, you need to rotate around your entire uh, glass and make sure there's still no hanging edges. I found some uh, in between here, and it looks like, oops, I have some here in the inside that I need to get rid of. It was the same on the bottom, same kind of situation. And I'm double clicking on each one while holding down shift and then shift right click delete edge and in, once your mesh is clean you can press two or three for smooth preview and you can see we have a very nice smooth oops, glass. If you have a problem like this then try to figure out what it is. You can see here I inadvertently deleted an edge. So I'm going to switch to vertex mode, grab these two vertices and right shift right click and connect components. And when I smooth, everything looks good. Now, when we come back, I'll show you how to add some more detail to your glass, and we will create um, a liquid mesh to be the liquid that's inside the glass. And I'll see you then.